Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. Last time, Laura and Fee challenged each other to a duel, so we have to head over to Mater Park to, uh, start it up. I'm surprised that the tram runs this late at night, but, eh, whatever. I'm also kind of surprised that, in such a big city, the capital of this huge empire, there's nobody in this park. It's just kind of odd. The park's scenery has an almost mystical air at night. It's nice. You're in luck. Not too many people taking a leisurely stroll at this hour. Well, that may be true, but this is still the capital. You really shouldn't be fighting here. How did it come to this? Put a sock in it, Machias. I apologize for burdening you with this, but I'd appreciate you keeping watch. This is ridiculous. Anyway, let's move over to that gazebo we came out of earlier. Okay, well, sounds like a plan. Let's do this. Let's go on over there. Uh... Ah, oh, what a pleasant evening. It's pretty re yeah, I guess they didn't account for me running whenever they did their active voice things. I don't see any people in this part of the park. I'm fine with here if you are. Alright, Fee. Here are my conditions. If I win this duel, I want you to tell me about your past. Your personal history. At first, there was something about your strength that I couldn't bring myself to accept. From the moment we first met, I could tell you were holding back, and considering your build, your combat proficiency is extraordinary. It's simply too far removed from what I've come to know through following the way of the sword. No doubt. Really? Yeah. All things considered, Fee's strength is totally improbable for someone her size. To add to that, you were once part of a Jaeger Corps. I can't say I've ever thought of the Jaegers in a particularly favorable light. If one defines knighthood as the way of the virtuous, how can the path of the Jaeger be seen as anything but corrupt? I came to believe that because we'd been raised with such strongly opposing values, I could not accept you. <gasps> However, I was mistaken. <laughs> After hearing Elliot's story, I asked myself again why it was that I felt such resistance to fighting alongside you. I tried to ascertain my own feelings, slowly and carefully, and that was when I finally realized. During all these months we spent together, I've known deep down that you were worthy of my trust. Our values had nothing to do with that judgment. It came from my heart alone. <sighs> but in my stubbornness, I refused to acknowledge that one simple truth. In my heart, I had already deemed you worthy of trust. Yet in my mind, I still couldn't see past our incompatibilities. I suspect that contradiction was what prevented us from using our Arcus to fight as one. <laughs> so that's how it was. Did you know about this? Yeah, I noticed during our fight with that monster earlier. You weren't the only one who thought we couldn't get along. You live your life so... honestly. I guess somewhere along the way I'd given up on you ever accepting me. I see. Still, what does this have to do with wanting to know about my past? Why do you want to know? <laughs> it's very simple, really. I want to know because I like you. What are you... I find it frustrating when I'm not able to understand those I've taken an interest in or have a high opinion of. I felt like this several months ago with Reen, and I feel the same way now. That's why I want to know your history. I want to know what shaped you into who you are now. That said, this is simply an act of self-indulgence on my part. Nothing more, nothing less. <sighs> I'm not sure what to say. That's our Laura, all right. You really are something else. It's fine. I don't mind telling you. But taking your spoils by force is the Jaeger's way through and through. Is that okay with you? <laughs> it's fine. Because I have no intention of thinking of my reward as a spoil of battle. I'd much rather consider it an honor, bestowed for a hard-won victory. Fine by me. You just talk things out. Why do you even need to fight now?
All right, I'll officiate your duel. Neither of you need to hold anything back. If I think it's getting too dangerous, I'll step in and stop the fight. Very well, thanks. Show you my strongest. Learn to play boss himself. That's enough. <sighs> I, I, I couldn't even tell who won. What about you, Reen? I feel bad saying this after volunteering to be the judge, but as far as I could tell, it was a draw. Really? <sighs> Well, I suppose it is what it is. I'll simply have to continue my training and challenge you again another time. And don't forget, I still wish to duel you as well. Wait, why me? <laughs> Honestly. Actually, I lost this one. Huh? Jaegers are at our best when we fight at night. The darkness gives us an edge. But even after I threw out a flash grenade, the duel still ended in a draw. If we'd fought during the day, I would have lost. That's... She has a point. Well then. Very well. I'll accept this victory. Hmm. Well, anyway, I guess the two of us should go for a little stroll then. I don't mind if you listen. Is that fine with you, Laura? I have no objections. We're all in this together. Okay. I used to be part of a Jaeger Corps called Zephyr. Before that, my earliest memories are of explosions and battlefields. I found myself wandering in a war-torn hotspot on the outskirts of some country I never even knew the name of. Jaeger Corps threw themselves into battle for the highest bidder day after day, while I wandered alone. The man who eventually took me in called himself the Jaeger King. He was the leader of Zephyr pretty famous Jaeger Corps. He was middle-aged, crafty, stubborn, and lucky. He always seemed so carefree, but he never let his guard down. To me, though, he was the closest thing to a father I've ever had. The other members of Zephyr had their quirks, but they were all nice to me. As time went on, I started helping with the cleaning, the cooking, the packing. During my free time, they started teaching me all kinds of skills I'd need to survive on the battlefield. One thing led to another, and I ended up fighting in my first real battle. I was... 10, I think. The boss was reluctant, but after the others persuaded him, he made me a full-fledged member of the group. For the next few years, we lived and fought together. I even picked up a nickname like some career Jaegers do. Sylphied. We roamed all across the continent together. There were hard times. Times when we thought we might not live through the night, but we always did. Together. Until last year, when our boss died. It was a clash with another Jaeger Corps. The Red Constellation. People used to say they were the only other Jaeger Corps in West Zemuria who could match us. Their leader, a guy they called the War God, had been on bad terms with our boss for years. Eventually, the War God and the Jaeger King decided to settle things with one big duel. They kept going for three days and three nights. In the end, they both fell. After that, the Zephyr I'd grown up with disbanded. All the members who were left just kind of scattered. I don't know where they went. Then, just like that, I was alone again. Uh, 
I don't know what to say. After that, you ended up coming to the Academy? Yep. Just when I was wondering what I'd do next, Sarah showed up. She said she'd been following the situation between Zephyr and the Red Constellation. That's how we first met. I told her about what happened, and she dragged me to the Academy. She introduced me to the principal, and after that, well, you know the rest. That's quite a history. Listening to you tell your story really brings into focus how limited my view of the world has been. But I feel like I finally know you. There's still so much more I want to learn, of course, but at least this gives me a base to build on. How about it? Care to mix things up a little? Let's do it! I wonder what she has in mind. Uh-oh. Yikes! Oh, wait just a minute! Ha! <laughs> I should've known. I guess I've had this coming since a practical exam, huh? Well, it's at your discretion, of course. I doubt either of us has the energy to fight at our peak, but we'll give it a try. You've gotta be kidding me! We haven't got a chance against them! Come on, this is a good opportunity to see what they can really do, right? Let's just think of this as a little bonus for our field study and give it the best that we've got. Fine. But I don't intend to hold back, so I expect no less from both of you. You have my thanks. Here we go! Yeah, it's boys versus girls! I'm not going to hold back. Fine, I'll do it. Yeah, I'm totally not going to hold back, actually. Oh, okay, awesome. Okay. So, uh, let's make sure they're all linked. There we go. And, uh, let's just make this quick and easy. We'll use Silk to Dance. <laughs> Bam! Of course. And what are we going to have you do, Laura? Yeah, Radiant Dance. There we go. Done. The end. Easy <laughs> enough. Should have seen that so coming. Ridiculous. We should keep going. Yeah, swift and sure. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself, so there we go. We did it! Uh-huh. Ah, fist bump for the win! You too. It's like they're off in their own little world. I think we've just witnessed the birth of an unstoppable duo. Hey! What are you four doing? Uh-oh. Crap. Yikes! Students, are you from the local high schools? We received reports of a group causing a terrible racket in the park. What in Adios' name are you doing? Please, sir, this isn't what it might seem like. There's a perfectly reasonable, though admittedly rather complicated, explanation for all of this. We're very sorry for any trouble that we've caused. We tried to minimize the disturbance to others, but it seems we weren't totally successful there. Perhaps dueling in the park wasn't as good as an idea as it first seemed. Maybe the underground tunnels would have been better. You know, it's a little late for such deep insights. Besides, who do you think were the ones who started this? Don't just act like you're some innocent bystanders. Yeah, officers, let me just, you know, put my guns and swords away. Nothing bad is happening over here. Sure, whatever you guys say. Ooh, you're moving up in the world. Ooh, nice. Sweet. <laughs> I've got a little reward here for you. Awesome, that'll help uh, regain your CP. Someday. Very good. Okay, so let's go ahead and start up our next day. Why not? In plenty of time. Ha! Huh. Elliot, you missed all the fun. He's gonna be so freaked out about what just happened. Huh? Are they all still asleep? It's almost time for breakfast. Oh, it's you, Elliot. Sorry, we didn't mean to keep you waiting. Well, what's wrong? You look exhausted. You might say we had a pretty eventful night. Look at those geriatrics. On the other hand, as you can see, we've gusted a spare. Isn't that right, Fee? And you call yourselves men. How can you two just waltz around like that after last night? Are you even human? Uh, just calm down. Wow, what the heck did you guys do last night? The two of you look like you've been chased around town by wolves, but Fee and Laura are all buddy-buddy now. Yeah, we'll catch you up on that later. First things first, let's grab the list of today's tasks from the mailbox. I wonder if Elliot thinks that they had, like, some orgy. God only knows what's going through his mind. Okay. Okay, sure. Why not? What's their breakfast? Like, bread and a salad? What the hell is that? Wow, so that's what happened yesterday after you guys left? I feel all left out now. 
You have our apologies. But listening to you talk about your resolve yesterday strengthened my own. I simply couldn't wait any longer. We'll treat you to something later. Consider yourself lucky you didn't have to endure two hours of police questioning afterward like we did. Oh, so that's why you all seem so tired. Yeah, it's not the lack of sleep that gets you, it's the mental fatigue. So, did you receive another packet of tasks from the governor? Yep, probably delivered first thing this morning before we were even awake. We'll look them over once we've finished our breakfast. Agreed. Make sure you get plenty to eat so you have lots of energy for the day ahead. And there's plenty more where that came from if you can manage it. Okay, so let's see what we got going on here. Okay, so this is our required one and another monster hunting quest. Ooh, boots are made for walking. Okay, I can do that. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, the names in this game, my god. Looks like we've got quite a variety today, too. Yeah, one of them looks like it will take us to an area we didn't get to see yesterday. Yeah, that monster extermination quest from Heimdall Port. We shouldn't have any problems getting there on the trams, same for Mater Park, where we were yesterday. We'll likely have to visit a number of locations today as well. And considering that the festival begins tomorrow, I expect the city will be buzzing with excitement. Still, no need to rush. Well, take care, everyone. It'll be fun just walking around watching as everyone puts the finishing touches on their decorations. Right. Thanks, sis. Thank you very much for making us breakfast. Alright, let's get started. These jobs aren't going to do themselves. I couldn't have said it better myself, Rain. So first things first, we're going to go to Vancore Street. And then head to La Sage Boutique. And talk to this guy right over here. Hey, what's up? Nice sweater vest. An ascot. What the hell are you wearing? <laughs> well now, you kids must be from Thor's Class 7. I'm Howard, the owner of this here boutique. You look shocked that I know who you are, but I was the one who designed these uniforms that you're wearing. Is that so? Well, it's a pleasure to meet you then. Come to think of it, we were told that our uniforms were made here just yesterday. They're fantastic uniforms. It's an honor to be able to speak with the man who designed them. Oh, you're going to make me blush if you keep all that up. It's really the other way around. You all suit your uniforms very well. You've even made your own little tweaks to match your personalities. Good stuff! I'm guessing you're here because of that request I sent in then. That's right. Can you tell us a little more about it? No problem. So, we got some new shoes in, but I'd like one of you to give them a little test run for me, just to see how they hold up in action. Oh, that sounds interesting. It's not our usual kind of request. Glad to see the interest. So you've got time to wear some shoes? Uh, sure. Why not? We'll be glad to help. That's the way. Just, what kind of shoes do you need us to test? They're actually the Strega Corporation's newest design. I think I've heard the name before. I don't know my shoe brands very well. I guess they ain't that popular here in Erebonia. I do happen to be familiar with them, actually. I believe they celebrated their 50th anniversary last year. They're from Lehman State, right? Yeah. I'm pretty impressed you two know so much. Same here. I read about them in a magazine once is all. I just realized that you're wearing Strega shoes yourself, young lady. Strega stuff is easy to move in and durable enough. They're pretty decent. Ah, good to hear some positive impressions. Anyway, I should probably explain what I actually want you to do. Or I will, after we decide who will be wearing them. The ones I've got here are for girls. Specifically, girls who are maybe 160 to 170 reg tall. Well, we've only got one person here who fits that bill. You're up, Laura. I can't imagine anybody else in our group wearing them, at least. Then it's sorted. Mind if I ask you to put them on now? Of course. Seems like they're the perfect fit. You'll need this as well, so here you go. What might this be? It's an orbital pedometer, which will use to track how many footsteps you've taken. It works in tandem with the transceiver and the shoes to count all your steps. It sounds like overkill, but I'd like my data as accurate as possible. That definitely seems thorough. Is there a specific number of steps you'd like for me to take before we return? I think 2,000 steps should do it. You can walk around more if you want, though. The results should be the same either way, so more steps isn't better or worse. Either way, once you clear 2,000, come on back and talk to me. Understood. Okay, Laura. Ready to do some walking? Always. Okay, awesome. Oh, okay. So yeah, you have to keep them on, and that's fine by me. But uh, anyway, so we're going to leave this on, and we'll uh, go to another area while these are on. Uh, we're going to go to the Ost District. Yeah, I'm pretty much going to do this stuff. Um, I'm going to, you know, do other stuff in the meantime while those shoes are on. And if I have to, you know, grind footsteps off screen, then I'll do it off screen. Whatever. So let's talk to this guy. Oh, no, no, where'd you go? Don't worry, I'm sure she'll be back soon enough. Oh, you're... Machias! I'm so glad you came. It's no trouble. You want us to find a kitten for you, right? That's right. She's been gone since yesterday and we were worried sick, but then we heard about all of you from City Hall. It was quite a surprise, to be honest. 
When we sent our request to the Residents' Association, we never expected Carl would take matters into his own hands. Oh, so you didn't send it to us directly? Father's as sharp as ever. Yeah, he really knows how to handle things around here. He's the governor for a reason. Back on topic, though, I've heard that you're all very busy as it is. Do you have time to help us with this? If not, there's no need to worry about it. There's always time to find a pet. Oh, thank you so much. Does that mean that you're going to find No-No? That's right. We'll bring her back before you know it. Could you tell us what she looks like? Of course. She's a kitten with pure white fur, and she's wearing a red collar with a bell on it. Oh, and she's a bit of a scaredy cat. Noted. So, when did she disappear? Yesterday evening. She ran away because I left the window open. It's all my fault. Oh no, Chacha. It's not your fault. We told you she was too small to be able to get out of the window, and that keeping it open would be fine. It's so high up we never expected her to be able to get out that way. It seems like a natural assumption. You can't underestimate cats, even if they're young. That applies to her, too. Agreed. Is there anything else you know that could help us? Unfortunately not, but just as Chacha said, Nono scared very easily. It's only been one night since she left, and she's very likely that she's still in the Orst district. I see. So we're probably better off keeping our search pretty local. Yeah, and I think we can safely assume we should begin our search outdoors. Someone certainly would have gotten in contact with the association if she managed to get into their house. Then it does stand to reason that she'd be somewhere outside. Great. We'll start searching right away. Thank you so much. Please find Nono for me. Oh, no, Nono has started, so let's head on outside and find this cat. Okay, so let's see. We need to check that one, that one, and that one. So let's start over here and uh, check out this cat real quick. Let's see, where are you? There you are. Hey, kitty. A mom and her kitten. It's always nice to see a family getting along. Neither of them match the description we've been given, though. Yeah. Then we should keep on searching. Okay, so off to find the other cats. Here we go. This reminds me of that song on Friends, that smelly cat, you know? I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but yeah. Phoebe used to sing that song all the time. Well, that's not an all-white cat either. What a strange cat. It almost resembles a cow. <laughs> what a bitch. Wonder if you can milk it. I doubt that somehow. This one doesn't match Nona's description either, though. Yeah, let's check elsewhere. Okay, so let's see. Where's the other cat? Okay, so it's over this way that I have to head on over. Ugh, why do they keep them so far apart? What a pain in the ass. So, there you are. Now that one's all gray. Oh, there's a cat. Not the right color, though. Then it's not Nono. It doesn't seem like there are any other cats around here, either. Yeah, we should go check somewhere else. I believe we've searched the entirety of the Oz District now. Yeah, I think so. Hmm, what's wrong? Something's wrong. Ost's home is most of Heimdall of Stray Cats, but I haven't seen their leader around anywhere. They have a leader? I guess we really haven't searched the alleyways or anything yet. True. Those are the kinds of places you'd expect to find kittens, too. Allow us to return to research them. Well, what's wrong, Fee? Huh, that's quite the impressive presence that I feel. It's massive for a cat. Maybe this is their leader? Well, that doesn't match the description either. And what are they talking about? Like, they can sense what's a cat? I mean, seriously? Okay, sure, whatever. Mr. Tittles? How the hell do you know this, Machius? You know what the other cats call the cat? Like, seriously? Ugh, whatever. So stupid. <laughs> he sure is quick, especially for his size. He's not the boss for nothing. I guess his hideout's on the other side of this gate. It must be. I wouldn't have thought to look here. Let's get this gate open and take a look. Is it alright for us to do that? Sure. The only thing behind there is an old abandoned house. No one will complain if we lock it up afterwards. Okay, so, well, let's head on inside. Hmm. Mr. Tittle should be around here somewhere. There he is. Oh, there he is, yeah. Huh. That kitten matches Nono's description perfectly, but I never would have expected to find her here. Likewise, I'm glad that we did, though. Don't celebrate too early. Looks like Mr. Tittles was keeping Nono safe. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Looks like we've made him mad, too. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. We're not here to hurt you. Yikes! Are you okay? I'm fine. Stay quiet. We're not your enemy. All we want to do is take that kitten back to her home. Just grab the damn cat! My god! 
Like, seriously? We have to have, like, a little kitty discussion over here? Good boy. I'm not really sure what's happened there, but I guess we're in the clear. I have no words. They seem to have connected somehow. I don't think any of us could have predicted how this would happen. Yeah, the sheer stupidity of it all, I wouldn't have predicted it either. Thank you so much for finding No-No. I can hardly believe the legendary Mr. Tittles took her under his care. Legendary? Seriously? Come on. The thought warms this old heart. <laughs> Agreed, and I'm impressed that Fee was able to connect with them too. It's not a big deal. Thanks for patching up my finger for me, Cha-Cha. You're welcome. This request allows us to see a side of Fee that we've never seen before. It really did. Oh yes, please take this. It's not much, but it's the least that we can do to thank you all. Ooh, get the kitty strap. Nice. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Bye bye, see y'all again. Yeah, thanks. Let's uh, check out those couple of accessories we've gotten lately, actually. We got uh, the gladiator belt. Oh, we got the luminous glasses. What are those two? Well, that's actually not half bad. Okay. What else do we get? We got this gladiator belt. So that brings up strength, defense, and auto CP recovery, which is really good. I'm going to give that to. Um, I'll give it to Laura. Why not? We'll give it to her. Because that's going to come in really handy. Uh, where is it? The, uh, hmm, did, I, did I go past it? I think I did, because those are those glasses. There it is. The gladiator belt. But we also got um, the like, kitty strap. There it is. Oh, eh, eh, not a fan. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about that. But we have another thing that we have to do at the port. Esperanza. I think I've heard that before. Where did I hear the Esperanza before? Huh. Lots of stuff going on here. Good lord. Here we are. Heimdall Port. It's the main harbor that opens into the Arnor River. Oh, so that south flowing river is the Arnor. I can see a warehouse district in the distance as well. Yeah, this is a major hub of the capital's freight distribution network. Not quite as important as the Transcontinental Railroad or airships, but still vital. We also received a monster extermin extermination request from here, too. Let's see if we can track down whoever made the request. Okay. So yeah, let's uh, keep on moving around. Again, I'm going to uh, talk to these people during the end slate. So, let's talk to this guy. That'll help me get my foot count in, too. But yeah. Person in charge, well, you're looking at him. Something I can help you with? Can't imagine what would draw a bunch of students to the port. We're here on a request from the Imperial Governor. We've been informed that there's a monster around here that needs to be dealt with. Oh, you guys are here about that? I just sent the request to City Hall yesterday. Didn't think they'd get anyone out here that quick. I'll bet this is my father's doing. The sheer coincidence of it has his fingerprints all over it. Well, he is the Imperial Governor after all. He can pull strings. Are you Governor Regnitz's son? You must be really proud to have such a hard-working dad like that. Uh, yeah, you're right. Anyway. Would you be willing to explain the particulars of your request to us? Sure, no problem. There's a doorway over there. We know the monster's lurking somewhere in there. It leads to an old underground passage, and lately, we've been hearing the howls of some beasts down there. Old underground passage, you say? You think it's... Might be the same tunnels we went into from the hotel yesterday. It does seem like that network of passageways runs under most of the city. Regardless, it seems the howling monster is to be our target this time. Might I ask how we gain access to the underground passage? Is there some problem? This has been bugging me. I think it's something about the way that you talk, but you're not a noble, are you? I am, but how does that impact our ability to do what you've requested? Maybe it doesn't, but still, you damn nobles live the high life looking down on us common folk. I can't really bring myself to ask for help from people who think that they're born better than us, but... Looks like the reformists have a pretty strong foothold in this part of the city. Yeah, but is that any real surprise? Actually, if that bothers you, I should mention I'm a noble too. Granted, I'm from a pretty distant part of the Empire, but still. You're kidding me, right? Our class is actually made up of both commoners and nobles. I'm a commoner myself, but Reen and Laura here have always gone out of their way to help me. Laura's skilled with a sword, and her commitment to duty is second to none. She'd never dream of looking down on people who are giving less than her all. Elliot, Fee. My friends are telling the truth. My father was the one who assigned us this task, so if you feel that you can trust his judgment... Sorry, you're right. You came out of your way to give us a hand, but it's hard to just shake old beliefs. Here, I'll leave this with you. Well, thanks. Head farther along the path to the port and go through the door that you'll find. That'll take you to the underground passage. The layout's pretty complicated, and there's water flowing down there, too, so watch your step. 
You have my thanks. It's nothing. I'm sorry for treating you so rudely before. I should have been a better man than that. I always thought nobles and condomers were oil and water, but I guess there are some good nobles out there after all. I agree. All right, you've got yourself a monster extermination. Let's head down to the tunnels. Ready when you are. Before we go, I want you all to know that I really appreciate what you said. Especially you, Fee. I didn't think that I'd ever hear you stick up for me. It made me truly happy. No need to thank me. There's no charge for telling the truth. Well, if you insist. Looks like these two really have patched things up. Well, I'll take that any day compared to what we had before. All right, let's start by finding the door that leads to the underground. Yeah. And we'll go in the Underground Passage next time on Let's Play Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to stick around for the end slate where I'm going to go around and talk to the people in the port and also turn in that uh, the boots are made for walking quest. If you'll, uh, happy watching! always helps me relax. Oh yeah, your hometown is right on a lake, isn't it? 